kindness, you can walk the ignorant heathen in front of the love of God as he's preached and taught, yet God still does not judge you with fire. That is amazing. That is so kind. And the patience of God to wait over 2,000 years. You see, the Bible says there are still people in the book of life to come to believe. So that's why I come to preach, because I know some of you guys may, and I, I'll go further than that, some will, perhaps one or two, out of probably a hundred or more that would pass and sit in front of me here while I preach during this time. So one soul saved is enough to come out and hand a leaflet, because that's how valuable your soul is to Jesus. Jesus says to you today, dear sinner, what does it profit you to gain the whole world and forfeit and lose your soul in hell? You see, Jesus created you. God created you. So God has every right to judge your soul unto heaven or hell. Again, I'll ask, do you think you're a good person today, dear sinner? Well, how many lies do you think you've told in your lifetime? How many lies do you think you've told during your life, all your life? To be honest, it's quite a lot, isn't it? Well, I've met liars who've told me they've never lied. Are liars good people? Is it good to lie? we teach our children to lie or do we discipline them for lying and tell them it's wicked and evil and wrong? Well, I hope so, folks, if you're good parents. I hope you're disciplined properly when it comes to lying and other bad behavior. You think God's going to allow liars into heaven, folks? Why does God hate all lying and liars and casts all liars into hell? Why will God not tolerate liars in his presence? Because he's good. Because he's holy. Because he's righteous and pure and love. And you see, lying about people is the opposite of being kind and loving, isn't it? Have you ever been hurt by anyone lying about you, gossiping? Telling lies behind your back? You found out about it? And it was supposed to be your best friend? And they really cut you to your heart? Really hurt you? Made you cry? Felt such a betrayal of trust. You see now, folks, how lying is the opposite of being loving and kind, and that's why God hates all liars and casts all liars into hell. He has every right to, folks. He is love. He is good. He is the perfect judge of all the earth. There's no mistakes with people in hell, folks. God knows all your dirty secrets of sin. Your friends and neighbors might not know, ladies and gentlemen. Your workmates might not know what you get up to when you go home and you close the doors and shut the door and even lock your door. You get on the internet, especially you men, and you start looking at certain images, certain videos, and your trousers around your ankles. You think your neighbors would think you're a good person then? What if we walked around with little video screens on our heads showing our thought life? You see, your thought life is, your, is the real you. God knows your thoughts. He knows your thoughts before you even have them. He knows the words you're going to say before you even form them in your lips that he's given you and the tongue that he's given you and created you with. He is the Almighty. He is omnip omnipotent. He is omnipresent. He is omniscient. He knows all things. God doesn't need anybody, folks, to teach him anything. He is the great teacher of all things and everyone. The Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit. The triune God. Teaches his people, his church on this earth, the working arm of God, sent by God through Jesus Christ to save his people and save his church 
from the judgment to come and their depraved sinful nature against God. God has been so kind to this wicked town of Taunton. Worse than Sodom and Gomorrah, folks. You see, Sodom and Gomorrah never had Jesus walk the earth. Sodom and Gomorrah never had the whole Bible at hand. Sodom and Gomorrah were never blessed like the United Kingdom, Great Britain has been blessed in the past. And look where we are now, folks, as a nation, towards our maker. We are in the gutter, the cesspit. Our morals are filthy sexually. We have sodomized God's holy institution of marriage and turned it into a thing of buggery and lesbianism. It's an abomination and disgusting to God. God made man for woman and woman for man. It's a perfect fit. Nothing else fits. Oh, but we try to force it with our sin, don't we? My goodness me, Mr. David Cameron may as well try and legislate against gravity than to change the laws of God concerning marriage. I am offended, highly offended as a Christian by the sodomization and buggery and turning into lesbianism, the holy institution of marriage between a man and a woman made by God with Adam and Eve as the first. But our Prime Minister says I don't have a right to be offended. You see, I cannot call the police and start wanting people taken to court taking our Prime Minister to court because I'm offended. But I'll tell you something now, dear sinner, freedom of speech in this land is hanging by its fingernails, by a thread, because Christian preachers are regularly being arrested because you guys are immature and you take offence so easy. I would say, man up and look to Jesus to give you a new life and know his love. If you don't like the preaching, walk on by. I'm not inciting anyone to hate anyone else. That is hate preaching. I am just preaching the truth. Because I love you, and I love God, and I love the truth of his Bible. And I have freedom of speech to do that. And actually, if you come against me, hating me, threatening me physically and swearing, you're the lawbreaker. You're the lawbreaker. Well, you see, the dear man, it doesn't matter whether he's interested or not, other people might be. You see, he's rather selfish and ignorant. He's just thinking of himself. Yeah. Yeah. I know at least one man who's interested in listening, so, sir, you need to stop being so intolerant. Be more kind, be more loving, be more gentle, be more patient. If you don't like it, go inside, drink your beer, whatever, go somewhere else. You don't have a right to tell the Christian preacher, preacher, you're not interested in go away, shut up, whatever. You don't have a right. Many men and women died in the Second World War so we could have freedom of speech and to allow Christian preachers to preach from the Bible. So if you have the heart to say shut up and you try and stop the preaching, you have the same heart as Adolf Hitler. You're no different. You're no different. Yeah, and young man, you show your heart by the filthy language you speak. No shame. And that's the truth of it, folks, you see. Yeah. That young man showed his heart by the filthy language he used. For out of our hearts come our souls. I don't have to walk and talk somewhere else. I can stay here and preach as long as I like. And I will. I will. If I was playing the violin, I could play the violin as long as I like here. If I was reading poetry, Shakespeare, I could read poetry from Mr. Shakespeare till the cows come home. And as a Christian preacher, I will stay here and preach to you lost, dear, heathen sinners for as long as I feel led to. You know what intolerance actually means, folks? You can look this up in a dictionary. I suggest you do, because then you may stop using the word in the wrong way. Intolerance means physically trying to stop someone doing what they're doing when you've no right to. Or sometimes you can be intolerant in the, in the right way. You know, it's right to be intolerant of liars and thieves and pedophiles. 
And as Christians, you know, <laughs> we are commanded to hate sin, but to love our enemies. First and foremost, I hate my own depravity, my own sin. The closer you get, you get to God, my dear friends, the more fallen you realize you are as you come close to his holiness and his purity. But by his mercy and his grace, he allows me to draw close. Through Jesus, who took my punishment on the cross. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved from the judgment to come. And your depravity towards God, your unbelief. For there is no other name under heaven by which you can be saved but the glorious name of Christ Jesus. Not Muhammad. He's a, he's a dead, lying prophet, just like all the other deceiving prophets in the world who come to steal like ravaging wolves and destroy. Buddha, folks, if you're a Buddhist, death at the end of your faith. Buddha didn't die on the cross for sinners, ladies and gentlemen. Only Christ, sinless perfection. And that was the qualification needed to satisfy his father against the wrath of sin and hatred of sin. As God judged his son, perfect in every way, he crushed him. You know what the Bible says, it pleased both of them to go through it. Because you see, they could see what would come at the end of it. His glorious bride, his church, believers, supernaturally reawakened spiritually to love God from the utter depths of depravity towards God. The second greatest miracle ever for the world to see. A person born again, reborn spiritually, loving God and desiring to obey his commands through the Lord Jesus. I have three Bibles here if anybody wants one. I've got some really good booklets teaching against the nonsense of the theory of evolution. You won't get taught this stuff in school now, young people. You'll get taught the lies, and most of you will gladly lap it up because you won't, you've got a heart that doesn't want to obey God. It's a booklet here, the Theory of Evolution, Fact or Fiction. booklets here on the resurrection of Christ and the truth of his rising from the dead. But here we see the depravity of your souls, folks. There's no takers, is there? There's no takers. You're more interested in your sin, you love your sin, than fearing what will happen to your soul when you're judged by your maker, who you know exists. But you deny the truth of God with your unrighteousness with your sin and the life you lead. The Bible says that the second coming of Jesus Christ, which is getting so close now, folks, this world is in turmoil, getting worse and worse. It's not getting better, is it? Wake up, dear sinner. Listen to the news. See the reality of human nature. Then look at your own heart. And fall on your knees before God for mercy and to know his love and forgiveness. Confess your sin. Repent of your sin, dear sinner. Time is short. Time is short. You're going to die. Once to die and then the judgment for every one of us shall stand and give an account of themselves before God. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 that Christ will return with all the angels of heaven to judge the ungodly with fire. Not water, as in the days of Noah, when God deluged this wicked world because of the depravity of sin that existed. Jesus said, when he, as he comes again, the days will be as in the days of Noah. Well, you want to read about what, what happened when Noah was alive, how wicked and evil mankind was towards God. And we're going rapidly the same way. He's coming soon, ladies and gentlemen. He's coming soon. This great Christ, not Muhammad, not Buddha, not Confucius, not some clever man or woman who said they were God and lie dead and rotten in a grave. The risen Jesus Christ. No more gentle Jesus, meek and mild, folks. He was never that in the, just that in the first place. If you read your Bible properly. Judge the ungodly with fire.
and the angels of heaven will cast you into hell. If you deny God, your God, your God of love, go your own way that leads to death. A life that seems right to you that leads to death, folks. Leads to death. I've got a scripture board on the front here from the Bible. It says, for the wages of sin is death. But listen to this beautiful bit, folks. Listen now, please. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. May God have mercy on your souls. Many of you will mock and scoff and laugh at the truth. But there will be none of that when you face judgment before your God, if you are not right with God on that day. You have heard truth preached to you today, folks, from the Bible, by a Christian who loves you enough to do it, who loves his God more. May God have mercy on your souls. May God have mercy on your souls. May God come and bring you to your knees in terror and fear at the realization of your sin, and depravity to God, and the judgment you deserve. Then by his love may he turn you to know his love, and you rise with great joy, supernaturally changed, worshiping your God.